Okay guys, I'm ready to block this shit. Ooh, a little chilly. I fucking kerosene heater took a fucking shit on me today. You pissed me off. You plug it in and it goes and it just blows out smoke and quits. I've done it a couple of times. I took out the jet, blew air through it. I don't know, I fucking took a shit. I think the uh the fan and pump are starting to seize up and it's kinda old. But I'm going to be blocking my primer, getting it ready for paint today. And uh I gotta put a guide coat on it. Now what a guide coat is is when you have your pan with an old primer like this, and you gotta sand it down and get it ready for paint. You wanna put something on top of it that's a different color. No matter whether you use spray paint, you can use this uh, straight line chalk for carpentry and roofing and stuff that you're putting the chalk on. Or uh, you can actually get a guide coat, which is similar to this, but it comes with a nice applicator and a little tub and everything. It doesn't matter what you use, as long as you have something on the top of your primer that's a different color. And uh, I use this chalk. I just put a little bit on a wipe off. And just wipe her on there. you cover your whole repair area where you're going to be sanding. Probably a good idea to put gloves on or else the chalk will get all over your hands, but I'm not scared of a little chalk. real quick and I'm going to knock down this primer real quick with the 320 because the 320 is going to be pretty aggressive for primer and then I'm going to go over it with my 400 now the reason why I normally do that is because if you just go straight 400 most of the time your sandpaper gets real plugged up real fast and you end up going through a whole lot of paper so if you use 320 first and you cut it down real quick and then you get all your scratches out with the 400 you can do it quicker with the 320 or 400 than going straight to 400 because like I said the paper gets all plugged up <clears throat> but got some paper on my box here and I'll show you why we put a guide coat on top of primer <clears throat> As you can see, the primer was light gray, like right here, and now it's got black on it from the chalk. And the reason why we put a guide coat on, let's see. The reason why we put a guide coat on here, I don't know if you can see this, let me check real quick. Yeah, you can see it. Alright. The reason why I put a guide coat on, okay? I take my block and I start sanding. You see how you can see now? You can see the orange peel. <clears throat> see where I sanded and the chalk went away and it's light gray? And see where the chalk still is and it's dark gray? You can see all the orange peel, and it'll show you where there's like a low spot or a wave in your bondo. 
it will show you that because the low spots will keep the chalk and the high spots the chalk will disappear so by using your guide coat if you sand it until all the chalk is gone you have a nice 100 percent complete straight surface with no waves in it because wherever there's chalk there's waves and you want to sand them out that's why we use a guide coat because it shows you it'll show you pinholes it'll show you chips it'll show you low spots it'll show you scratches then you just keep sanding until all that chalk disappears <clears throat> but I'm gonna keep blocking and uh, if I come across the low spot I'll show you an example of a low spot come on stay you fuck Still snowing outside. Oh. I had some fun when I was out in that season before. There was a couple of parking lots that weren't plowed yet. I'm sure Hodge Pod's garage is having fun in his fucking uh, Audi. Yeah. Fucking ass. Alright, found the low spot. I want to show you guys. Alright, see how this is all light gray? All light gray. And there's a little bit of orange peel right there left. That's a low spot. Let's see how I'm using a long block that's longer, a lot longer than that low spot. What that's going to do is that's going to take these and and this and it's going to make it all nice and uniform and straight cuz I'm instead of concentrating on just this little area I'm going to stand the whole area which is going to level this this and this all together as one <coughs> Just like I said, anything else. This way and this way, cross hatch it. That way, it's a non directional surface, and when you lay your paint down, you won't have to worry about any striping, especially when you're doing metallics.
important to feather your edges back. You don't want that to show through your paint. 